Hi, I'm Patrick Jaguer, the Cosmic Alchemist, and thanks for tuning in. So, real quick, if you have not um, liked and subscribed and shared my videos and commented on them, and you like them, then I would like to ask you to consider doing so because it helps the channel do better, the better the channel does. The more videos I can make, the better quality, the more interesting. Um, and when it comes to comments, it's all about helping the whole search algorithm. So you don't have to write, you know, a novel length comment. Um, you can just put a thumbs up, you know, a thanks, whatever. So thanks either way. So in this video, I want to talk about the um, kind of a sort of a near future prediction. So we're talking cold and flu season 2021, so fall and winter, you know, and then into, you know, 2022 even. Um, so, you know, here in the Northern Hemisphere, cold and, cold and flu season starts October, November, continues through March. Um, and astrologically speaking, it really begins when um, the sun goes into Virgo, you know, especially the, the latter half of Virgo, you know, so... Sun's in Virgo in September and October. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's kind of the astrological kickoff, the cold and flu season. And the, um, the textbook kind of marker or harbinger or sign for, for a tough cold and flu season is a uh, Sun and Mars conjunction in Virgo. And so we had this in 2019, in October 2019, before the whole the whole health emergency, the Black Plague, <laughs> the Black Plague, um, you know, October 2019, we had Sun and Mars and Virgo, that was one of the first harbingers, and then we had the whole Saturn and Pluto and Capricorn, which is really, it gave the, the, the health warning, you know, the cold and flu season warning, a flavor and a personality, and Pluto and Saturn and Capricorn is really, it's all about fear and it's about just being, you know, control freaking, control freakism, being a control freak and living from fear and wanting to control things out of fear. So that gave, you know, the, the Saturn-Mars conjunction Virgo was just the red flag for a tough cold and flu season, but then the Saturn-Pluto in Capricorn gave it its flavor and said, you know, what it was going to be. So I think, you know, the, the, the health emergency, the pandemic of late was really a, um, it was a fear and control freak disease. That was really the, what was spreading. It wasn't so much the physical thing. Um, so yeah, that, that's what foretold everything that happened at the end of 2019 and, you know, 2020 and, you know, now, almost halfway into 2021. So now, coming in October 2021, we have um, Mars and Sun conjunct on October 7th. So that, again, is a flag, a harbinger, a signal for a tough cold and flu season. Because, um, again, Virgo is the sign of health, healing, wellness, disease, ailments, you know, all that stuff. So, 20 degrees Virgo, October 7th, Sun and Mars conjunction. So, then we have to look for something else that says, that tells us what is the flavor of this tough cold and flu season going to be? What is, what's the personality of this, this kind of health emergency going to be? So we have to look further in the, into the chart to do that. So if we look on that very day where Mars and Sun meet up at 20 degrees of Virgo, we get another conjunction that in my opinion is really going to inform this. So give me a second here. Yeah, so this other conjunction happening on the very same day, October the 7th, is taking place in Scorpio. 
So Scorpio, just like all the signs, Scorpio stands for many things. So we have to, you know, focus in a little more. So Scorpio stands for transformation, sudden transformation, sudden ups and downs, sudden gains and losses, also um, surgeries, illnesses, um, you know, even even health emergencies, um, taboos. Um, hidden things, secret things, <clears throat> and it also stands for sexuality because, you know, in the polite society, sex is something that goes on behind closed doors. So it falls into Scorpio. So, yeah, Scorpio is, is the sign of sexuality. Um, so in Scorpio, on October the 7th, we've got a conjunction between Venus and K2. So, then it's not an exact conjunction like the Sun and Mars that day, but it's very close. So, Venus is at 6 degrees Scorpio, K2 is at 8 degrees. And they're also moving towards each other. So, you know, there's kind of like, you know, they're closing in on each other. It's It's like when you're it's like if you're driving down the road and a car is in the opposite lane and you go past each other, there's what's called a closing speed. So if you're going 50 miles an hour, the other car is going 50 miles an hour, you get a combined speed of 100 miles per hour. So, yeah, I think that kind of kind of makes conjunctions like, a, you know, when a, a retrograde planet and a, a direct planet have conjunctions, I think it kind of got a it's got a, a, a high closing speed you know it's got more explosiveness to it more potential energy because there's just that little moment where they're gonna pass each other you know and it's like it's why head-on collisions are so dangerous um, so yeah that's the way I look at it and you know K2 being the south node of the moon it's it's always retrograde um, Rahu and K2 north and south nodes of the moon dragon's head dragon's tail they're always retrograde um, just like how sun and moon are always direct. Any other planets can be direct or retrograde. So yeah, K2 is always retrograde. And Venus, at this point in time, is direct. So they're moving past each other. So Venus at 6 degrees Scorpio, K2 at 8. So they're within 2 degrees. That's, that's pretty tight conjunction. It's not exact, but it's very close. And you're influencing each other in the sign of sexuality. Now what do these planets mean? Venus is the planet of social activity, romance, sensuality, pleasure, and sexuality. K2 is the south node of the moon, the dragon's tail, the shadow planet of... It does deal with spirituality. It deals with losses. Um, it, it, the symbol for it, it's like Mars, a symbol is a blade because it cuts things away, it cuts things loose. Um, K2 is, it has to do with what takes us out of this world and into the spirit world. So it deals with endings and death and things like that, liberation from, you know, the, the material plane. And um, it also deals with... Um, you know, headlessness with um, thoughtlessness because K2 is, it is symbolized by a body without a head. So K2 doesn't think. K2 doesn't think. K2 just feels and K2 just follows intuitive guidance. Um, on a good day it follows intuitive spiritual guidance. On a bad day it follows impulses because, you know, K2 can be represented by you know, a spiritual practitioner, you know, just like a very peaceful, like a monk or something. But it can also be symbolized by a terrorist who is thoughtless, um, has no will of their own, and just, you know, follows an impulse. Um, just follows the bandwagon. So, either way, it's a person who is not thinking, you know, they're following their feeling. So they're following their inspired feeling. So, and that is really kind of to the crux of the matter here because, you know, 
The sex drive is a very inspired feeling, and, and very often we don't think. Um, and um, when we don't think about who we have sex with, then all kinds of unwanted things can happen. Um, you know, scandals and baggage and um, people catch STDs. And, and the STD is really brings us to the point of this video here and gives this whole health emergency, this whole this tough cold and flu season, which moon, uh, which um, Sun and Mars conjunction at 20 degrees of Virgo is flagging, is indicating. So, you know, it's in the title of this video, the new STD. So, in this, this tough cold and flu season, I think we're going to see the emergence of a new STD and this is being indicated by this Venus K2 conjunction in Scorpio. So basically the the sickness, the disease is going to come by um, from not thinking clearly about who people are having sex with. So now where is this STD coming from? In my opinion, I think it is it's going to be a side effect of the new experimental, very adventurous remedy or therapy that was created within the last year or so in response to this whole health emergency, this whole black plague that is ground the world to a halt. Um, I think because this remedy, this, this very adventurous experimental remedy, is more of a gene therapy and it, and it delivers through mRNA, it, it, it catalyzes changes in the recipient's DNA. And I th so it causes mutations, and I think these mutations are going to spread via, um, it's a good chance it's blood, and I think through, you know, sexual fluids um, is going to be a way that, that mutations that were started by the health remedy, the, the experimental health remedy, the emergency health remedy, I think the changes caused by that will transmit to other people through sexual contact, through the fluids, um, and even through blood, potentially. Um, so yeah, that's what I think that this fall and winter's health emergency is going to be all about. So this is, I think, going to be construed as a second wave or... or <laughs> there have been so many goddamn waves to this thing and variants and all that, you know, according to, you know, the, the purveyors of news um, of the mainstream variety. So I think they're going to construe this as a new wave of the ongoing health emergency and, you know, Black Plague. Um, but it's really going to be a side effect from the, the experimental remedy. Um, so, you know, bear this in mind and, you know, be careful about who you, um, who you have sex with, um, especially if it's, you know, you're just meeting somebody. Um, starting now. Um, this is going to take a while to manifest, you know, but, pe and people are already talking about getting severe rashes from, after having sex with people who, um, had the experimental remedy, the syringe-borne remedy. Um, so yeah, that's that's really the big deal here. Is um, you know, be mindful of that and be careful who it is because I think these these changes, these mutations, are going to spread via sexual contact, via the fluids. Um, you know, and. Like with a lot of STDs, you know, condom doesn't always quite do it. Um, 
So, you know, just just best of I'd say just best avoid people who who've had the syringe born remedy altogether if you're concerned about this. If you don't really care, um, you know, then more power to you. Um, you know, with all this said, I mean even people who don't who are not careful, they're, they're even going to be people who don't get it. You know, it's just like AIDS or something, but um, it's a hell of a gamble. So I would be very careful about this. Now, again, the purveyors of extreme variety, they may even spin this thing to say, oh, the, the, the plague, the health emergency, the pathogen is taken on this whole new strain where it, it passes via STD, via sexual transmission. That's going to be a lie. It's really going to be the side effects, the genetic mutation side effects transmitting via sexual contact. So, and again, it's, you know, the astrological rundown, the red flag for the tough cold and flu season is Sun Mars conjunct 20 degrees Virgo and then what gives it, it what gives it the personality is Venus K2 conjunct within 2 degrees in Scorpio sign of sexuality Venus is the planet of sexuality K2 is losses death you know so so what we're looking at here is you know a scenario where sex can be potentially lethal here um, or at least, you know, cause losses via illness. Um, and we still have, you know, Saturn in, um, Saturn and Pluto in Capricorn. Um, so there's this whole fear element to it, too. Um, so, and that's another thing, too, is, um, you know, when it comes to the fear, there's been a lot of um, there's been a lot of a lot of hype around the whole subject of shedding, and I just might as well weigh in on that too. So the whole idea of shedding is that you know people who've received the the syringe born experimental remedy, the the gene therapy, the whole idea is that those people, since they're making proteins differently, are going to be shedding and sloughing off these proteins. Um, people in the alternative news media community, whatever, they've been using this, I think, in a very kind of a whorish kind of a manner. You know, they, they complain about the mainstream news, but they often do the same thing. So people have been creating a huge hype and a huge scare about the shedding and the sloughing. Um, and really, they're acting like people did back in the 80s and in the early 90s when there was the big AIDS paranoia. And people acted like you could catch AIDS just by, or HIV, just by shaking the hands of a person who was infected with it or just breathing the same air or being breathed on. Um, and we've all seen for the past, you know, 30 plus years that this is not the case. So a lot of people with, the, with this whole protein shedding thing. They're doing the same thing. I think this is a bunch of bullshit. Um, I think a lot of people are using this to get subscribers and to make some money and to, you know, to fulfill their dreams of being new age gurus. And, um, yeah, I don't, it's not as simple as people say. It's, you know, I think it's through blood, it's through sexual contact. Um, that's how it's going to happen. Um, but then too, I think, I think the, not just these mutations that, that, you know, are going to be shedding, but even the, the original pathogen, the original plague that started this whole thing, I think it wasn't a purely, um, physical pathogen. You know, I was, I was turned on to this concept by another astrologer, you know. Um, he was even saying that it's, um, 
it's it's like an emotional kind of an energetic sickness, you know, and the sickness is fear and paranoia and you know, being a control freak. That's really the the sickness that's been going around. Um, and when people are resonating with with those emotions, then the pathogen can you know jump between them. Um, I think it's the same thing with these mutations that are taking place. You know, the shedding of these genetic mutations caused by the the um, syringe-born experimental remedy. It's like, yeah, I think people can get it without a whole lot of physical contact, just because there's like a an emotional resonance. But yeah, for the most part, I think the whole shedding thing is it's a bunch of bullshit. It's a bunch of hype. Um, it's just new age and um, alternative opportunism. So yeah, yeah. So the whole point of this video, yeah, the new STD is because it all is going to be transmitted by people who received the the syringe-born experimental remedy. So be careful who you have sex with. Um, Anyway, uh, thanks for tuning in. Um, oh, well actually, you know, in the last part of this too, I almost forgot the last part I wanted to talk about. Um, the last part of this tough cold and flu season is there's a whole other component where it doesn't have to do with the STD. I think what we're also going to see when the, when the mainstream starts to say there's a new wave of the plague, there's a new wave of the health emergency, what we're going to be seeing here is basically the, the side effects of this, this syringe-born experimental therapy backfiring, you know, autoimmune reactions. I think this cold and flu season, the autoimmune reactions are going to start spiking and going way up. So, again, if the whole, if the purveyors of news of the mainstream variety start saying there's a new wave and we need a new experimental remedy for it, no, we just happen to have a new one ready to go. It's not a new wave. The new wave is a bunch of autoimmune reactions to the the first round of injectable remedies so yeah so yeah this tough cold and flu season it's it's the two things it's the it's the new STD coming from the mutations that can be passed on and it's the um, it's the autoimmune reactions to the to the injectable remedy so that's that. Thanks for tuning in. If you haven't had a Vedic Astrology reading with me, I highly recommend it. It's a great way to um, basically to navigate through life, to navigate through the current times, through the current events, to see your, your hidden opportunities, hidden talents, um, potential pitfalls, and to just get a better look at yourself so you can, you know, get a, a look at basically what your destiny is, what your life purpose is, what you know, what your life path is, and what it is you're here to do. I also have, um, I do rune readings, I Ching readings, and I have um, a couple of videos on sale for downloads, Qigong videos. Qigong is a great mind-body practice to um, boost your energy, to become aware of your energy, and to cleanse your energy. So, thanks again for tuning in. I will uh, be talking to you later. Have a nice one.